And now let's move on to our vCenter server upgrade. So as you can see in the vCenter server, the prerequisites are single sign-on and inventory service, which we've already gone through and installed, along with the important notice that they've mentioned down here of the VMware vSphere web client, which we've also gone through and done the installation of. So let's begin this and click install. Select yes. Select OK. Okay, the installation wizard has detected an earlier version of vCenter. So, and the earlier version will be upgraded to server 5.1, to vCenter server 5.1, sorry. So let's click next. Click next again. Accept license agreement. It's picked up our previous ODBC connection, so let's click next. I want to upgrade my existing vCenter server database and make sure that you've got a backup of it before you continue with this installation. Also make sure that you've backed up your SSL keys uh, looking at this directory here. And let's click next. So in here you can uh, select automatic if you want the vCenter agent to automatically be upgraded or you can select manual. If you select manual basically you'll just need to go through and reconnect each host. Once you reconnect the agent will be upgraded. I'll select manual but feel free to select automatic and I'll click next. Here is our service account that vCenter is running under. So I'm just going to enter in the password for that account and the fully qualified domain name for our vCenter server is already populated so that's correct. Click next. Here's a list of all the ports that vCenter is running. Take a screenshot of that into WordPad. Save that onto our desktop. And let's click next. Once again, I'm going to have way less than 100 hosts, so I'm going to select more small as the inventory size. But feel free to select medium or large depending on your infrastructure. Click next now. Now for single sign-on, I'm just going to enter in the password once again for our admin at system-domain account, which was the default account once again on our single sign-on server and I'll click next and as you can see it's pre-populated the URL for the inventory service with the port and if we actually go back to our port we can see HTTPS 10.4.4.3 from inventory service and that is correct here 10.4.4.3 so I'm gonna click next and we're gonna install into the default directory once again click next and we're ready to begin the installation, so click install. Okay, and our vCenter server has now been upgraded. So let's click finish and let's exit the installation wizard. Now that we have our vCenter server upgraded to 5.1, let's just go into our VMware vSphere web client. And what we want to do here is just check on our permissions to the vCenter server. So by default I can log in with the local administrator account. That's the local administrator account on the vCenter server itself. So to do that I'm going to log in as bmvc1 slash administrator and I'll put my password in for that account and click login. Now let's click on vCenter, hosts and clusters and as you can see at the top here we have our vCenter server selected and if you're not at this screen, what you need to do is just click the Manage tab and then click Permissions. So as you can see in my vCenter server here, I have the local administrators group for the server, for the Windows 2008 server. So if you're familiar with the permissions of Windows Server, you'll know that the local administrators group does contain the domain admins group. But this doesn't allow you to log in to your vCenter server. 
So what I need to do here is add a permission and I'm going to, under assigned role, I'm going to select administrator which is full access and then under users and groups I'm going to click add and I'm just going to make sure that I've got my domain selected here so I've got vmlab.local and I'll drop down this and just show the groups first and what I'm looking for is my domain admins and I'll click add and OK and actually we want to change the role to administrator yep so just make sure that you've got your user here with the role administrator it's full access and I'm actually going to add another account as well which is my service account and that is actually a domain user so here it is here vCenter service I'll click add and click OK and we'll change his assigned role to administrator as well. Now I'll click OK and as you can see the accounts have been populated into the user group section here and now we'll be able to log into our vCenter server. But before we log into our vCenter server we're going to have to upgrade our vSphere client. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's click install, click OK, we'll click next, next, pretty straightforward installation, we'll install into the default directory, click next, install, I'm going to select automatically close and attempt to restart the application, click OK. Just a reminder that I am installing this within VMware Workstation. That's probably why the USB error message came up. The vSphere Client 5.1 has now been installed. We'll click Finish. We can close the installer. Close my computer. Now we're ready to log into our vCenter 5.1 server. So I'm just going to double click on the vSphere Client here. I've got my address for my vCenter server in the field here. And I just have the option to either use the Windows Session credentials that I've logged into. So I can show you here that I'm logged in as administrator. So as username administrator on the user domain VM lab. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to type in my administrator account here. So I'm going to type in administrator at vmlab.local and my password. If you can remember a couple of minutes ago we added in the vCenter service account which was just a plain domain user on the VMLab domain. When you type in uh, that user you can also type it in as just vCenter service so you don't need to put at vmlab.local or you don't need to put vmlab slash and then the user account and this is because of the single sign-on mechanism. But this also works as well, administrator at vmlab.local uh, and my password. So I'm going to click login. And we've logged into our vCenter 5.1 server, as you can see up here. Now our next step is we're going to be upgrading the host agent on our ESXi server. So as you can see here, it's disconnected. And what I'm going to do, it's actually powered off at the moment, so I'm just going to go power it on and I'll come back and reconnect it in. Now I've just flicked over to our VMware ESXi 5 server because I just want to show you that it is VMware ESXi 5.0 and the build is 623860. So now I'm going to go into my vCenter server and it's still disconnected here. So I'm just going to right click it and click on connect. And yes we want to reconnect the host. I'll just expand the details so you can see what it's doing. So it's currently retrieving data from the vCenter agent that is currently on ESXi1. And there we have it. We have it connected into our vCenter server. Uh, as you can see, still running 5.0. Um, I'm running evaluation version here. In our next video, what we'll be doing is doing an in-place upgrade of our ESXi 
server from 5.0 to 5.1, which will be added into this whole vSphere 5.1 upgrade series.